first time, so bear with me as I try and follow Director Best's lead. Good evening and welcome to the conference agenda of the Passaic County Board of Chosen Freeholders. Lou, you take the roll call. Freeholders Duffy, here. James, here. Sarah, here. Lepore, Laura, Deputy Director Bartlett, here. Director Best. Okay, with that, I will turn it over to our administrator. Thank you, Deputy Director. Uh, we have a presentation, as everyone is well aware, we had the restoration of the Zion Mansion, which completed this year, and the State County received the 2016 New Jersey Historic Preservation Award from the Department of Environmental Protection's Historic Preservation Office. Uh, there was a ceremony in Morristown at the National Historic Park on May 12, 2016. Uh, we have representatives of the county there uh, to accept the presentation on behalf of the Board of Social Freeholders. And we are going to now officially present that to the board. I know we have our county historian, uh, Ed Smyth, here with us. Andrew Thompson, who is the uh, county uh, project engineer on, on, the, uh, on the project. So I would ask the two of you, we also have Michael Place. Michael is here. Michael, why do you have to step here? You know, you were there in 1780, and every time I'm here in 1934, it's 1780, but I, 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 I've decided to truncate the address in the interest of brevity. <laughs> As we know, the Dye Mansion was acquired by the uh, Sake County Park Commission and the agency in charge through funds provided by the Board of Chosen Freeholders and the various uh, Depression era work agencies to restore the Dye Mansion, and uh, it opened. Uh, it was restored under the direction of a very famed architect, Charles Edward Cordelius, and it was dedicated on the October 1934, the 154th anniversary of General Washington's return to the Dye Mansion. And as we know, the Dye Mansion uh, has gained immortality because it was at Washington's headquarters July, October, November 1780. Now, the, the Freeholder Board deserves really high marks for quite simply keeping the faith over the years uh, and bringing this project to fruition. And this project really moved along with great speed. And we were very fortunate in having selected as the restoration architects the John Milner firm from Chad's Ford who developed the plans and um, an excellent contractor who used top grade craftsmen to restore the mansion. And some of the things that were done were quite interesting. For example, the major work categories include uh, structural repairs, stabilization of the roof framing, masonry uh, repairs at the east end of the building, roof replacement, masonry pointing with, lower, with uh, window restoration, flooring restoration. We went through a great deal of effort to get the correct window glass uh, to mimic 18th century glass, and that was obtained from a firm by the name of Benheim in Germany. Um, so we replaced the mechanical and electrical systems, French drains. In other words, what we did, we brought the Dye Mansion into the 21st century so it will endure for many, many years. And the building was in pretty good shape. Of course, it needed work from 1934 on. The restoration took place in 1933-34, so it needed, needed a great deal of work. Um, we, were, we also were very fortunate in getting support through the New Jersey Historic Trust in an initial grant award of $619,000, and that was matched by the free so the dimension costs 1.4 million to do, and we're also projecting the visitor center 
and $599,000. But I can't stress enough how gratifying it was for me to work with my colleagues and to work with the freeholders. And the freeholders are, of course, paramount in this. But we happen to have a very, very fine county architect, Andrew Thompson, I work with him. Right along with this, and Andrew kept this project moving. And he did it with aplomb, and he did it with a great deal of knowledge, and he deserves a great deal of credit. And then, of course, we had our uh, uh, planning director who handled the initial grants with the state, and our county engineer who uh, was, you know, shepherded the project through from the engineering end. And Steve uh, handled a lot of behind the scenes details in, in getting things done, and he did it in his, with his usual wide ranging expertise or anything uh, regarding engineering. So it, the project took a little bit more than a year. Right. And something of this complexity, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, uh, is something to marvel at. For example, in Washington's uh, office, the uh, a part of the floor had been, a small section of the floor had been eaten away by a marmot. And uh, the uh, flooring was replaced, uh, that section was replaced by Dutch repair using 18th century woods. Uh, the, the entire center first floor hall, the original woods were identified and they were uh, uh, saved. And the firm uh, obtained 18th century woods from a place in, in uh, a salvage, wood salvage place in Pennsylvania, which is renowned for that kind of work. So, again, it was a, it's been a great pleasure. And I think that um, we were vindicated in this investment of tax dollars. We were vindicated by the award granted to the freeholders and the other participants in the project by the uh, New Jersey uh, uh, Historic Preservation Office. And that's a competitive award, ladies and gentlemen. Many people are nominated for this award, and, and not that many are chosen. So that, that was also a very big plus. And that is something that we can add to the accolades that have accumulated around the history of the Dime Mansion from the time it served as Washington's headquarters and also was placed on the state and national register. And uh, the New Jersey, the Historic Trust for Historic Preservation, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, uh, one by the name of uh, Dupre Bullock, who was the historian, said 40, 50 years ago that the re initial restoration of the Nine Mansion was an outstanding one. So we have many accolades to add to the building. And uh, I want to repeat something. Why? Well, what we spent all this taxpayer money, on, as the county administrator said, we want to utilize this building so people can learn. We want to see this as a great educational experiment. And I, I have to say, for all the best, and writing to the President of the United States in the same way that was done in 1934 when Franklin Delano Roosevelt responded and gave his words of encouragement. Freel read the best said that uh, the board had embarked upon an extensive restoration and rehabilitation of this stately house. So it will prosper for another century in educating our various uh, visitors, men, women, children, of all ethnicities and creeds, about the fundamentals of American democracy. And you know, in, we've seen events that shock us. Terrible things have happened to this country. And we need a place like the Dime Mansion more than ever to help educate people what are, what are the ideals, ideals of American liberty? And what transpired there in 1780? Yes, it's a house filled with beautiful furniture. Yes, we can learn about Colonel Dye, who was in invited General Washington to use his house in 1772, as, as uh, I know this because I was there, as Colonel <laughs> Duffy said. Uh, I, was, I was very young then. In fact, I, 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 I saw General Washington sitting in that office. And, uh, uh, you know, um, you, you, look at, you look at what transpired there, and why do we fight the revolution? Well, one of the main reasons is to enjoy the fruits of the blessings of democracy that we enjoy today. So we are very, very hopeful that the site will see a resurgence of interest in not only just cultural values, but the values that are, that are implicit and embodied in our Constitution and the liberties that we enjoy today. Thank you.
microphone or add anything, please feel free. But well, just uh, again, working on this project, and again, thank you on behalf of the Board of Freeholders and New Jersey Historic Trust. Um, what was really a rewarding project to work on for the dimension to restore this for Passaic County. And we hope that, you know, we have a couple of other projects coming up that are in the county in Golf Boom Park and in uh, Weasabro Park, and we hope to get the same amount of uh, you know, work done there to restore those buildings and again give some good nature back to the county. I'd just like to add that I'm even more proud than ever before to be part of the Passaic County team because this county and the two builder board has really made a name for itself in terms of leadership and historic preservation. As you know, last year we, we received an award for the designation of the courthouse and courthouse annex to be placed on the National State Register. So all the other counties are watching what the state county is doing. And obviously it's for celebrating our culture and history, but also in terms of economic development to attract visitors to our county. So it's really an exciting time to be here, and I really am appreciative of the leadership of this board and understanding that. So thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. And kudos to all of you. Uh, Ed, you added so much to the Giant Mansion opening with the monograph that you had printed from our former colleague, uh, Freeholder Dio, and his writing about General Washington's time with the Giant Mansion. Uh, and to please convey back to your entire teams uh, our gratitude for the great work that was done. And uh, I, I think it's so exciting, as you pointed out, and uh, Director Bass wrote to the President, and we'll now have side-by-side -side letters, one from President Roosevelt and one from President Obama talking about the work that the county has done at the Dye Mansion and preserving it uh, twice now in the past century. Well, thank with, you very much. Well, thank you, Freeler. With, with the Board of Freeholders, everything actually stops there as the, the legislators of the county. And uh, after, after being watching so many of our properties slide into uh, problems, it was highly gratifying, as I said, on my part, to see this board uh, committed to the slogan that they have adopted of a, uh, a rich history and a bright future.
point of Part 91 and the Passaic County's plan for citizen participation. Passaic County has prepared a new annual action plan for uh, fiscal year 2016 for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Passaic County prepared the Passaic County Community Development Block Grant Program annual action plan for year 2016 in accordance with the objectives of the five-year consolidated plan, which is in effect between fiscal year 2013 and fiscal year 2017. The annual plan covers the program period from September 1, 2016 to August 31, 2017, as a summary of the projects recommended for funding that have been distributed. The objective of this program is to assist uh, low and moderate income residents and individuals with special needs for Zoom benefits the county was saying there 12 communities participating in the urban county CDBG program. Bloomingdale, Hamilton, North Lawn, Little Falls, North Hamilton, Pompton Lakes, Crossway Park, Greenwood, Cotua, Wanakew, West Millbury, and Brooklyn Park. The communities of Passing, Say, Clifton, and Wayne received their own entitlement grants from HUD. In addition, nonprofit agencies providing services to low moderate income individuals in the 12 participating municipalities are also el eligible to receive funding. No more than 50% of the grant may be utilized for public services service activities. In the past five years, projects such as the Second Avenue uh, Storm Drainage Project, the Side Improvement Programs in Montague have been funded, renovation of the Einstein Memorial Library in Pompton Lakes, uh, installation of ADA curb ramps, and uh, with paving of Ethel Avenue and Spoon Avenue and Houston Street in Portland. <coughs> and the installation of sanitary sewer system, bathroom facilities, and spray park in Hospital Park, Prospect Park, just as an example. <coughs> CBG funding applications from municipalities and nonprofit organizations are issued in January of each year and are due in March. For this year, 2016, applications were due on March 14, 2016. The first uh, public meeting for this year, 2016, was held on February 5th at 930 River Drive, Toledo, New Jersey. Applications were reviewed by the Planning and Economic Development Committee of the State County Board of Chosen Freeholders. Freeholders on April 6, 2016. Um, and the projects that are included in our uh, proposed action plan for 2016 include Borough of Bloomingdale, $75,000 for the Leary Avenue reconstruction, Borough of Halden, Belmont Avenue, Town Square Park, $100,000. Borough of Fort Lawn, the beginning of 8th Avenue for $50,000. Borough of Compton Lakes, uh, ADA compliant curb cuts for $44,560. Borough uh, of Prospect Park, uh, the reconstruction of North 10th Street between Allen Avenue and Fairfield, Fairview Avenue for $100,000. Borough of Totowa, the sanitary sewer lining project phase four for $100,000, that's Riverview Drive between Rosalie Street and Margaret Street. Borough of Wanakew for the road reconstruction of Lincoln Avenue, Locust Street, Maple Avenue, and Rosalie Street, $75,000. And Borough of uh, Woodland Park, Wilbur uh, Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project Priority, which was at priority number one, the fifties at $7,000. In addition, we've uh, proposed funding for several nonprofit organizations, Catholic Family and Community Services to operate privately for $20,000. Midbridge Services to operate uh, project sale for $12,135. Uh, the Fair Housing Council of New Jersey that provides housing discrimination counseling to the state and the residents for $5,000. And the County Court appointed Special Advocates CASA for $10,000. Um, and the total grant this year $810,869 Thank you very much. Thank you. Since this is a public hearing, I would just want to have on the record who was present here from the three older orders. Lou, could you repeat the roll call? Yeah, three orders. Duffy. Here. James. Here. Zara. Here. Laborde. Here. Laura. Here. Deputy Director Bartlett. Here. Director Best. Here. So, does anyone present desire to be heard on the fiscal year 2016 Community Development Block Grant Action Program? Excuse me, Action Plan. So, uh, as a member of the public, just state your name and address and 
for that three minutes, and anything you say is a public record. Um, Erica Kasslinger, I'm the Executive Director of the State County Court Appointed Special Advocates, better known as CASA. Um, as the first year we are being proposed for receiving funding, I just want to thank the Brigham Board for um, considering our application and uh, the proposal. Um, for those who may not be familiar with the program, we serve children who have been um, abused and neglected by families here in the state county and are under the jurisdiction of the family court. Um, in the particip participating 12 municipalities that uh, represents, that are, that are participating in the um, community block, community development block grant program, um, we would be serving approximately uh, 12 to 15 children under this grant program, additional um, over what our current population has served in years prior. Um, last year, Pasadena County Casa served 202 children across the county. Unfortunately, that only represents about 30% of the total population of children in foster care due to the limited funding and limited volunteers that are available. Um, so we're always trying to increase both funding and volunteer opportunities, and we welcome this opportunity um, from the freeholders. This is the first time we've received any county funding, um, and so we're really excited about the opportunity to um, increase our partnership, and we appreciate the Support. So thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to building our relationship with Thank you very much. Does anyone else present wish to be heard regarding the CDBG fiscal year 2016 action plan? Seeing no one. Rose Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Lazar. Yes. Four. Yes. Laura. Yes. Deputy Director Bartlett. Yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, do we need to roll call that to get at this time, or is that done as a part of our regular meeting? Is that the resolution? Uh, no, the resolution will be considered on June 28th meeting. Uh, great. This is we're still in the public but hearing. It's not it's Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
kids than we ever have, and we have less kids paying than we ever have. So it really is something Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone regarding the consent agenda? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Moved by Freebuilder James, seconded by Builder Duffy. Builders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazara, yes. Lepore, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. members of the public just to uh, acknowledge that we can't officially start until 6 p.m. so we have to wait until uh, 6 o'clock on the dot and then we'll begin our conference agenda meeting. Thank you. Our regular agenda. Excuse me.
Our pledge is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask everyone, please remain standing for a special moment of silence for all of the brave men and women serving our great country and also for the victims and the families of the tragic shooting in Orlando, Florida. Thank you. a motion to approve the minutes from June 14, 2016. Second. Moved by Freeholder Report, second by Freeholder Duffy. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Lazara. Yes. Four. Yes. Laura. Yes. Deputy Director Bartlett. Yes. Director Buzz. Yes. Uh, entertain a motion to approve proclamations. Moved by Freeholder Bartlett, second by Freeholder Duffy. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Lazara. Yes. Four. Yes. Laura. Yes. Deputy Director Bartlett. Yes. Director Buzz. Yes. And uh, are there any freeholder reports? Uh, director, uh, just want to report that uh, Freeholder Director Lyons met with uh, Principal Air for that um, in communication system of the Patterson Fire Department, Department of Human Security the situation. I just want to publicly thank uh, Dr. Rose from uh, Community College, who uh, provided space up by the Public Safety Academy uh, for the trailer, which will have an articulating antenna uh, on it uh, to be temporarily placed at the cook lines, uh, which will actually uh, serve State County better than it would have had it been on our tower. So it will pick up the, um, the uh, township of Wayne, uh, along with uh, possibly some other little bit of Wilma Park. Um, so it's a win-win. Uh, mapped out what needs to be done. Our involvement from the county level is we just have to dig the trench to bring the electric from the building to where the trailer is on the cliff line. Um, so just waiting for the final cost proposal on that and maybe the, uh, the final uh, plan so that we can bring it to the freeholder board and to the board at the Freeholder College. That's all I have. Thank you. And Freeholder Board, I want to thank you for uh, your leadership in, in this area as well as Freeholder Duffy who serves on committee. Uh, our director of uh, emergency management, Bob Lyons, and uh, of course our sheriff, Richard Burdnick. Uh, they made this proposal to us uh, several months back, and uh, on first take, it seemed like a good idea. Um, however, there were some uh, details that needed to be worked out, and uh, I think that this solution uh, works out much better than the original proposal. So even though it took a, a couple months to get done, uh, we're now able to uh, incorporate other municipalities uh, in the county uh, save some money, uh, and it's also cost savings as well for uh, for the city of Patterson, who's proposing uh, this particular initiative. So thank you so much. Director, I just want to add uh, one sticking point that whole uh, situation, as you recall, was that the uh, federal government was only going to pay uh, for the uh, for the, the mechanism for three years, and then after that, it was kind of unclear as to who was going to pick it up. Uh, Mr. Scalera had indicated that the federal government will now. Uh, bear the cost of keeping the, the temporary trailer up at the uh, uh, Public Safety Academy until such time that a permanent facility is found, uh, whether it's at that location or somewhere nearby. So again, uh, very happy to report that the taxpayers of the state county will reap a tremendous amount of benefit uh, from, especially the Patterson Fire Department, uh, from the um, communication system at, at next to nothing in terms of which is always good. Yeah. Thanks again, Freeholder. Uh, Freeholder James. Yes, I just want to uh, make an announcement. We are having a memorial service next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock at the Public Safety Academy in Holden Road in Wayne. I would ask everybody to be there. It's a memorial service for those who lost their lives uh, this Sunday in Orlando, Florida. And if anybody can make it there, uh, we're going to have a dignified service. We think that it's worth it. Six o'clock on the twenty second, Wednesday the twenty second, Public Safety Academy on uh, Old Road in Maine. Thank you for your James for your department. Director, I just want to say kudos to you and everyone else who was part of today's kickoff of Tuesdays in the Park. 
uh, we not only recognize Flag Day today in Courthouse Plaza, but also uh, started a summer program of jazz and fresh organic vegetables from City Green and a lot of outreach from our various county offices. It's going to be a great destination for folks every Tuesday from now until mid October. And uh, excellent work to, to all who took part in that. I right. also want to congratulate our colleague, uh, Freeholder Laura. I'm not sure if coordination is the correct term, uh, but I know you were uh, recognized and uh, promoted the ministry in your church uh, about a week and a half ago. I want to congratulate you. By Freeholder James, second by Freeholder Duffy. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazar, yes. Lepore, yes. Laura, yes. Debbie, Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. This time we'll entertain a motion to open the public portion of the meeting. Move it. Move by Freeholder Lepore, second by Freeholder Bartlett. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazar, yes. Lepore, yes. Laura, yes. Debbie, Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, at this time, I'll ask anyone from the public wishing to be heard to please approach the podium. You have three minutes, and um, we ask for your name, address for the public record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Isaiah. My address is 128 Ward Street in the city of Patterson. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, I want to reiterate something that I said the last time I was here. We are not here, or I am not here to bash anyone. And I'm not trying to be the dead horse, and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody on the field, but I'm, I'm, I must point this out so that you can understand the great the gravity of the scenario that we're talking about. Let me begin. The title of my three minutes is Proceed Problems to Address at the Cape Passaic County One Stop Center. In other words, problems to address regarding the current one-stop center paradigm and how to make one-stop centers more responsive to client needs. Perceived problems. Perception of Jose County residents. The client's initial one-stop center perception is shaped by one-stop center personnel. There is a flawed application of the WIA, the WIB, and the WIOA framework. It appears some one-stop center personnel are ill-equipped and insensitive, insensitive to the varying needs of a diverse clientele and are out of touch with their clients' needs. Clients that have taken the initiative to help themselves find one-stop centers particularly useless, often being placed in networks and unfulfilling training needs. Ignorance of a real-time problem that is dynamically affecting state county residents is a potential reflection of the democratic party. Basis for the current conclusions, an 11 year relationship with LWD interactions that would be labeled with more forces uh, development. Real time empirical data compiled on a daily basis from the Neighborhood Assistance Office. Client testimonials. A recruitment fair held on 523 that had, by May 23rd, that had less than enthusiastic results from clients and the alleged employers. Apathetic responses to party initiatives, which reflects a general disenchantment with the current party paradigms. Resolution. Utilize the public's proposal to change the current one-stop paradigm. Collaborate with and engage the public as a necessary adjunct to resolve the current paradigm. Don't circle the wagons against the public. Do not attempt to resolve the issue internally Use a lot utilizing the public's preliminary information. This will lead to a perpetuation of the current paradigm and will be perceived as damage control, not a resolution. Partner with the public. Do not create an adversarial paradigm with the public. This is non-productive. Conclusions. Do not go into turmoil. Work with the public, not against. 
realized this multi multifaceted scenario has dynamically affected the public over a period of time. A perception is shaping of the Democratic Party. It has grown used to the black vote. Remember, we are all public servants. However, you guys are getting paid, however, to address the public's issue, and we are the public. We want to make sure that we're dealing with public servants and not people who are self-servants. Thank you very much for your time and your listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to be heard? Seeing no one at the podium, you need to close the All right. Motion made by Freeholder Duffy, second by Freeholder Fourth. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazara, yes. Report, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, again, I want to thank you, uh, Robert, for coming out uh, to share your concerns with us. Uh, the last time you came to our meeting last month, uh, you, you had a, a more detailed and, 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 and longer speech that unfortunately you weren't able to get through fully. Um, we asked you for a copy, if you could still provide us with that copy so we have a chance to, to digest it. Um, already sent it. It should have been received. Did everyone hear? Oh, if you yeah, didn't, I'll already send it to me. Okay, excuse me. All right. So in that case, I, I take it back. And we're not just, uh, anything that I say in front of you, there's a hard copy, I'll send you that. Okay, also. I appreciate and so, it. And one final thing, it didn't take 10 seconds. So the, the information, the next information you will see will be a public request for funding in the form of a white paper, and I'll make sure you people get it first before anyone in the public. Thank you. I owe you that respect. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, at this time, we will, um, I will accept the motion to uh, amend the agenda to include mm -hmm. item K76. Okay. Second. Moved by Freeholder Duffy, second by Freeholder James. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, Lazara, yes. Labor, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, entertain a motion to approve items K1 through K76 of the consent agenda. Move it. Second. Moved by Freeholder James, second by Freeholder Duffy. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazara, Labor. Uh, I'm going to abstain. Uh, Lepore, yes. Laura, yes. Dur Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, new business, it's the same motion to approve personnel. Uh -huh. Moved by Freeholder Bartlett, second by Freeholder James. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazara, yes. Lepore, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. <clears throat> yes. It's the same motion to approve the bills list. So Moved by Freeholder Bartlett, second by Freeholder James. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Zara, yes. Four, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, Entertain a motion to approve certification of payroll. Move. Second. Moved by Freeholder Bartlett, second by Freeholder James. Roll call, please. Freeholders Duffy, yes. James, yes. Zara, yes. Four, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett, yes. Director Best. Yes. Uh, receive departmental records. Uh, receive, receive the file. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else from uh, my colleagues? Motion. motion made by Freeholder Duffy, second by Freeholder James. Roll call, please. Freeholder Duffy, yes. James, yes. Lazara, yes. Four, yes. Laura, yes. Deputy Director Bartlett. Yes. Director Best. Yes. Thank you all. God bless you. Get home safe. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.